Okay, so what we are talking about today, it's called, we're talking about angles, and we're going to actually apply some of the trig that we've uh, learned lately. Uh, two different angles. We call it angle of elevation and depression. Now, when I say depression, it's not like you're feeling real sad. Okay, but depression means, like if you put a depression in the ground or something like that, it means, okay, it means a hole, it means down, right? Elevate, to elevate would go what? Up. Up, and to depress would go down, all right? So these words, right, yeah, because if you're feeling down, right, that's depression. So elevate means up, depress means down, you got it? So elevation is the up angle, and depression is the down angle. But let's talk about that for a second. Watch what we have here. I'll just go real simple, and then we'll um, get a little bit more in here. Here's the horizontal right here. Let's pretend it's the ground, all right? And let's put, let's say you have like a building or something. I'm not going to be real fancy, but I'll draw like a little rectangle thing. That's our building, all right? So here's our building, and let's say you had a point on the ground, and you had a point at the top of the building. Everybody see that? All right, and uh, let's change colors here. What we're going to do is, uh, let's say you're, you're at the top of the building, you're looking down right here, and you wanted to find the angle, okay, to this point down in here. There's all kinds of different situations, and we'll look at a couple of them. A lot of them are like uh, somebody's like up on a cliff. You know, think of this. You're up on a cliff looking down. Let's say this is the ocean or something. There's a boat on the ocean, okay? Or you're down here like this at a ground looking at top of a... You're down here on the ground looking at the top right here. Sometimes they call it a tree, or this is a shadow that's cast. There's all kinds of different situa situations that they use this angle of elevation and angle of depression. All right? So um, let's talk about which angles are the angles of elevation and which one is the angle of depression. First of all, you have to understand that it always goes from the horizontal. Okay, The angle of elevation and the angle of depression always starts from the horizontal. So if we're right here, which one is the horizontal? Is it the yellow one or is it the pink one or whatever that color is? It's the yellow one. That would be horizontal. Okay, we're just we're kind of making an assumption that the ground is horizontal. We're not in West Virginia where we're on a ground, you know, on a tilt like that. Okay, so this is the horizontal right here. The angle of elevation goes from the uh, horizontal to that line of sight. We'll call this our line of sight. Okay, that right there is the angle of elevation. So the angle of elevation. Because it starts from the horizontal, then it goes what? Up. That's right. Angle of uh, elevation means going up, right? To elevate, to go up. So we're starting from the horizontal, and if we go up like this, that angle right there is the angle of elevation. Make sense? We'll put an E here for elevation. Is that all right? Now, what in the world is the angle of depression? Well, let's see. If we're up top, okay, a lot of people mistakenly think that this angle right here is the angle of depression, but it's not. Because remember what I said here, you always have to start from where? The horizontal, the horizontal and go to the line of sight. This is our line of sight. We're looking from here to here or we're looking from here to here. Everybody got that? So this right here is the horizontal. This is the angle of elevation because we're looking up. Got it? If you're up here though, where's the horizontal? Is it any of the lines that are drawn right now? No. Not really. Okay, so let's draw. Oh, we'll keep it yellow. All right. So that right there would be the horizontal. Follow me? So where is our um, angle of depression then? Okay, this top one right here. That's right. Okay, so really you go from the horizontal what? Well, we went from the horizontal up for elevation, so we're going to go from the horizontal what? Down. Good. The elevation, or the... Um, that would be the angle of depression. All right, so that's the angle of depression. Just because it's going down. All right, but it always starts where? It starts from the what? Horizontal. horizontal. It starts from the horizontal. Angle of de uh, depression goes down, angle of elevation goes up. Now, this is kind of interesting. This is a little throwback to what we've done um, in the past. Look at these two lines. This is horizontal, and this is horizontal, so tell me something that we know about those two lines. Well, the, the two lines first. I, you're getting ahead of my... They're parallel, right. Okay, so this and this are parallel to each other. Okay? Now, go ahead, Eric, say it. Right, these two angles right here, look. The angle of depression and the angle of elevation are alternate interior angles, aren't they? 
What do we know about alternate interior angles when you have parallel lines? They're equal to each other. That's right. So what must be true about the angle of depression and the angle of elevation? The They're exactly the same. So if I said this was the angle of elevation was 30 degrees, then what would the angle of depression be? 30, 30 degrees. Now, it's not the one inside the triangle. Everybody got that? Okay, a lot of people make that mistake. It's a common mistake, so don't make that mistake. This is the angle of depression right here, which is 30 degrees. Now, sometimes they give you the angle of depression, so that's not really inside of our triangle, is it? So what we do is we say, okay, they give us the angle of depression. What are we going to use, though? We're going to use the angle of elevation because they're exactly the same. Do you see it? Because what we're going to do is we're going to use this right triangle, and we're going to solve for some things in this right triangle. Does that make any sense at all? Mm -hmm. All right, so now you know what the angle of elevation is right here and the angle of depression is right here. You know how to find them. It's always from the horizontal to that line of sight, okay? Or I was looking at one website, and they said the line of vision, but it's the same thing, right? The way that you're looking right here. Everybody got it? All right, so let's take a look um, at a little example here and see how we can do this. Now, these are word problems, okay? I was, You know what I was going to do? I was going to um, – tell you what. I actually – was prepared for this, I think, <laughs> because I actually went online. We'll see how it works. I haven't tried placing it on here yet. Um, it's, uh, I did go online to find word problems. I got to find out where I put them now. I put them on lessons, and I put them under angle of elevation. Look at that. See how prepared I was this time? And here we go. And let's place that. There we go. Now it might get a little bit um, might get a little blurry. Let's see if I can. Hit the shift key like this. That's not too bad. You can read that, can't you? All right, so there we go. So let's work with this thing. So that's better me trying to draw an airplane because I'm not a very good artist. I'm a pretty bad artist, to tell you the truth. But here we go. It says the angle of elevation. Oh, look how they spell that. Aeroplane. It's probably from England or Australia or something like that. Okay, A E R O. All right. Which? Who's from British Virgin Islands? Are you from British? Are you from British? Did they spell airplane like that? A E R? How would you spell it? A I R? Yeah. But this is kind of like a British spelling. Anyway, it says the angle of elevation of an airplane is 23 degrees. So look what they did. This is the angle of elevation. You see it? It says if the airplane's altitude. Now, what, if we, what are we talking about when we're talking about an altitude? Is it this length right here? Is that the altitude? You guys need to stop. Okay. So the altitude is the height, isn't it? It's from the top perpendicular to the base. Everybody remember that? We've talked about that. We've used the word altitude before, haven't we? Yes. And that's the altitude of an airplane. So here's the plane. The altitude is straight up and down where it's perpendicular, right, to the bottom. Everybody got that? That's the altitude, 2,500 meters. It says how far away is it? So what they say by how far away, it's kind of like the line of sight. Sometimes they'll ask you this. They'll say um, a point Give, find the distance of a point, like let's say you're right here, this is you, you're the observer, okay? And find the distance, the horizontal distance of a point directly below the airplane. So if they ask you for that, what are they asking for? This bottom part of the triangle, you follow me? So it all depends on what they're asking for. They could ask you a couple different things. So they tell you the angle of elevation is 23 degrees, that's right here. They tell you the altitude is 2,500 meters. How far away is it? So what you have to do, you have to realize that you're going to make a right triangle out of this. Does that make sense? So if we make a right triangle out of this, um, this is what it's going to look like, basically. Now, how in the world could we solve for x if we have a right triangle like this? Let's make this a little thicker. What do you think? It's a right triangle. I got an angle. I got a side. So guess what I can use? I can use one of my what? Yeah, and what do we call those things? Trig functions. We call them trig functions, okay? But you're right, sine, cosine, or tangent. Let's figure out which one we want to use. Do you, un do you understand that? Yeah. So if I have an angle and I have a side, and I know it's a right triangle, i got to know those three things. One angle, one side, and I have to know it's a right triangle. Then I can find one of the other sides. Got it? So how do you know it's a sine? Because it's... Very good. It's the opposite and hypotenuse. Look, this is the opposite side, isn't it? And that is the hypotenuse right there. Can you read that? It's a little light, isn't it? Let's go to a darker color. Um, let's go to blue. 
All right, so this is opposite. That looks a little bit better. And this is hypotenuse. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? The sine. The sine uses it, doesn't it? All right. So let's go a little lighter now. I'm going to draw on the black. So we're going to take the sine of what? 23. Right. We always take the sine of the angle. The sine of 23 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Which side's the opposite? 2,500. That's the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is x. This is that one where you got to do two steps, right? It's not one step. After you get used to this, it's really not that big of a deal. So I can't have the x on the bottom, can I? Up there. It's paper towels, but you can use them. All right. This uh, you you can't have x on the bottom because you got to solve for x. X has, has to be on the top. So how do I move this from here to over here? Multiply it by what? X. So multiply that by x. That cancels out. Then what do you got to do over here? Multiply that by x. Everybody with me? Then I'll tell you what. Let's write that down first. So what do we have? We got x times the sine of 23 equals what happened to those x's here they canceled out so that's 2500 that's one step all we got to do is two steps it's not that big of a deal remember the sine of 23 is just a number that you get in your calculator so this number is being multiplied by x how do you get rid of this you divide it that's right you divide it not by x don't divide it by x divide it by the sine of 23 all right so it's really two steps and you're done multiplied by x. After a while, you kind of get used to it. Really, what did we basically just do? We switched places with the x and the 20, sine of 23, didn't we? We stuck the x up here, put the sine of 23 down here. Right? I'm showing you the steps. I'm showing you why the algebra works. But after you do this a while, you look at this, oh, it's one of these things, so put the x up here and the sine of 23 down here. Then it gets pretty easy. Right? And now, what do we do to get the answer? The calculator, that's right. And I just happen to have a calculator right here. All right, so uh, did some other stuff. There we go. 2,500, 2,500 divided by the sine of 23. And I like to close that. There we go. Wow, look at that. 6,398. Does that number make sense? Sure it does, because look, this is 2,500. This is 2,500. And it's really not a very steep to, um, angle, is it? It's actually pretty low angle, all right? And if this is 2,500 right here, this is going to be a whole lot longer than 2,500. And that, and it is. So it's 63.98. We'll just say that, okay? So it's what? 63.98. And that's in meters. And that's how you would find that. Okay? So that's how you'd find the hypotenuse. All right? We good with this? That's not so bad, is it? So we take a word problem, which I know are not everybody's favorite, but it wouldn't make any sense doing math or learning math unless you knew how to do some word problems because that's what we learn math for, right? Is to apply it, is to apply it to real life situations. And this is a real life situation. And there you go. What do you think of that? Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Let's try another one. Um, again, I grabbed this off the internet. I should have just, um, oh, I don't want to paste. What do I want to do? I want to place. Not paste. Place. There we go. And let's do this crazy one right here. Let's see. Oh, I can't even read that thing. I don't know if I can... See, I haven't practiced placing this stuff. Oh, my goodness, that's ugly. Let's make up some numbers here. So, Oh, we got an airplane again, but he's not flying, though, is he? Now, why would they have an airplane on the ground in a building right here? It's weird. Anyway, let's say that's the... Uh, what, are those, what are those people that... um? No, no, no. Those people that talk to the airplanes and stuff, the tower, the air traffic control, right, good. The air traffic control. So let's say the person's up here in air traffic control and has got to look down here. I have no idea what that number is. What do you think that number is? 23. Uh, we already used 23. Let's use something else. 33. Nah, it's not 73. 33. 33. Okay, we'll use 33 degrees. Okay. I don't know. What do you think that is? 200? Okay. Yeah, that looks like 60, doesn't it? It looks like 60 to me. I don't know. We can make up our own numbers. It doesn't matter, right? So there we go. Um, well, they tell you all kinds of stuff. Actually, let's do this. Let's say... Oops, see, they're using... Let's get rid of this. Um, let's say we don't know this. And they might actually do that. That might be, like, unknown or something like that. But we'll call this X. Is that all right? Sorry, it's so ugly, but that's how it goes. All right, so... Um, What's the deal here? This is the angle of elevation, isn't it? 
yeah. right? So that's the angle of elevation. And what do you want to find? You want to find how far is it from the, let's say, the entrance of the building, right? The bottom right here to the plane. We want to find that distance right here, all right? So uh, what are we going to use? Here's an angle. If you wanted to, I guess you could. Um, you, you could draw it kind of clean without all the junk all around it. I don't know, does that make it a little bit better? So this is 33 degrees, this is X, and this is 60. All right, so if you didn't want all that junk all over it, you can make it nice and clean like this. So which trig function? This is what? This is opposite, and this is adjacent. So what's opposite and adjacent? Opposite and adjacent. It is a right triangle, okay? So it's tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we take the tangent of what? 33 equals the opposite, which is 60, over x. Now look, here's another one where we have to do that algebra again. All right, Watch, you could probably should be able to do this in your head. Remember what I said what we can do with these two just things? Switch them. Just switch them. Right, just take this. So we multiply by x and we divide by the tangent of 33. So the x goes on top, the tan 33 goes on the bottom. Everybody see that? So x equals what? 60 divided by... Are you guys okay with this? All right, that's easy, isn't it? All right. So I took the x, I put it on top. How do I know to put it on top? Because it's on the bottom right now. I want to do the opposite. What's the opposite of having something on the bottom? Putting it on top. But I got to put it on top on the other side, though, right? This is on top. This is in the numerator. So if I put it to the other side, where is it going to have to go? In the bottom. You get it? So basically, I just switch places with it, and there I go. And so now you just stick this into a calculator, and hopefully we get an answer. So it's 60 divided by the tangent, where's tangent, right there, of 33. And there it is, 92.4, and we'll just say 92, all right? So that's what that distance would be. From here to here, all right, that horizontal distance would be 92 feet. Make sense? All right, let's do, um, tell you what, let's... Let's do one like this. Now, I'm not going to try to draw a fancy picture or anything, but let's, um, I'll just give you a situation. I'll tell you what, I'll just read it to you. You probably don't have your books open, do you? But that's all right. Um, it says, a lifeguard is watching a beach from a line of sight of six feet above the ground. All right? Yes. So a lifeguard is six feet above the ground. So what are you going to draw first? The ground, okay? So there's the ground. He's at the beach, okay? And the lifeguard is six feet above the ground. So he's on some kind of a tower dealy thing like this, right? Okay, there's the tower. And he's sitting, he's he's right here, okay? And that's what? Six feet. So from there to there is six. All right, what else does it say? It says, well, I said he, they say she. She sees a swimmer at an angle of depression of eight degrees. So where's the swimmer? The swimmer is probably out here somewhere. Do you agree? Yep. All right, so here's the water. It's pink water. Okay, so um, uh, the swimmer's out here, and, they s and the lifeguard sees the swimmer at an angle of elevation, or angle of, what I say, depression, right, of 8 degrees. Thank you. <laughs> I have a terrible memory. All right, so she's looking like this, right? Now, remember what we said. The angle of elevation is equal to what? The angle of depression. The angle of depression, now if I wanted to do this, watch, I could just do a nice straight up and down like that. So we make a nice right triangle out of this. Everybody see that? All right, so we make a right triangle out of it. That's a right angle. What's the angle of, of um, depression? Is it this angle right here? Is that the angle of depression? No. Remember what the angle of depression is. It's from the horizontal down, right? But if you just remember this, the angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation. elevation. That's right. So this angle right here would be the same as if you took, let's do a different color. Um, watch this. If I did that, everybody see that? Look, this is the angle of depression right there. That's 8 degrees. But that's not even in my triangle, though, is it? So I want to angle inside my triangle, so I'll just say this right here. So this right here is the angle of elevation. And what did we say that angle was? Well, this is the angle of depression. The angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation, right? So this angle right here is 8 degrees, which means this angle inside the triangle is also going to be 8 degrees. 
Make sense? Yeah. All right. So now look what we have. Now, if you don't like all that junk all around, let's just clean it up, and make it look a little nicer. Remember, that's six feet, and this is going to be extra long, isn't it? Okay, because eight degrees is a pretty thin angle, wouldn't you agree? All right, so that's what our triangle looks like. So uh, what goes here? Six, it's a right triangle, and we know our angle is what? Eight degrees, and uh, let's see what the question is. The question says, how far away from the tower is the swimmer? So what distance am I finding? Am I going from here up top like this? Now that's not the distance, okay? The distance to the tower, the, the bottom of the tower is right here. The swimmer is right here. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find that distance right there. Does that make sense? So it says, how far is the swimmer from the tower? So if I was to, you know, put a tape measure and tape from the tower to the swimmer, I would start at the bottom of the tower and I would measure out to where the swimmer is. So this would be the measurement right here. You okay with that? All right, so um, now let's do some trig, see what we got. This angle right here is 8 degrees. Um, they give me this side, and we're asking for this side right here. So it's tangent again, isn't it? All right, so it's the tangent of what? 8 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. Look, third time today. You should get this stuff straight by now, right? So what do we do with the x? Switch it with the tangent of 8. So um, x equals what? 6 divided by the tangent of 8. All right, let's put that in here real quick. We've done this. This is our third time now doing this problem. So it's 6 divided by the tangent of 8, and there it is, 42. We'll round it to 43, okay? So 43 feet. So about 43 feet. And what did we just find? We found this distance from here to here. Does that make sense? Yeah, because this was a real skinny angle, so this is going to be really small. This is going to be a lot bigger, isn't it? So this is going to be a lot bigger than what the 6 is. So 43 feet away. That's how far away they are. All right? Make sense? Okay. So really, they actually make devices that you can tell the angle of depression and the angle of elevation. It's really not that hard. It just uses gravity and stuff. So you hold it horizontal, and then you measure. Like if that lifeguard was up there and they wanted to figure out how far away they were, all right, they would just take that device, choop, measure the angle, right, stick it into this little formula right here, right, because they know they're six feet high. That's not really not going to change. They put the angle in here, and they can figure out how far away that swimmer is from that lifeguard stand. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, so, I mean, you can find the angle. It's really not that hard if you have the right device uh, to use. Okay, um, let's do one more. I thought that one was going to be something. What if, um, I don't know, let's say here's the ground. Okay, let's say there's a tree. I'm not going to be real fancy and try to draw a fancy tree, but let's say that's the ground and that's a tree. Agreed? And Hello. Kenny's right here. Real quick. All right, so let's say this. Let's say we don't know the angle. I'll call it theta. Remember that one? Okay, if we don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, let's say we knew how tall the tree was. Let's say it was um, uh, 20 feet high. Okay, and let's say we're pretty far away. Let's say we're 100 feet away. All right, so 100 feet away. The tree is 20 feet high, and I wanted to find this angle right here. So how would you find that angle? It's a theta. Remember, theta is a Greek letter. The alphabet represents an unknown angle. So how would I find that angle if I knew those two distances? The tangent again. That's right. Why tangent? Because it's opposite and adjacent. Okay. The math is a little different on this, though, isn't it? Because I don't know the angle this time. So the tangent of theta is opposite, 20, over adjacent, which is 100. Everybody with me? So how do I get theta by itself? I have to get rid of the I don't times it by tangent. Give me a good word that I use over and over and over. Say it. Inverse. That's right. Inverse. That's the word that I want you to use, okay? So we get rid of the tangent by taking the what of the tangent? The inverse of the tangent. So that goes away, but I have to take the tan inverse tangent of this side. How do I show to the negative first? That's right. to do the inverse or when to do well, it's because I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to get this value. Okay, I don't know this value, so I'm trying to get rid of the tangent. Over here, I don't. 
I have to get rid of the tangent because I know the angle. I just take the tangent of the angle. I'm not trying to get rid of the tangent. I take the tangent of the angle. In this situation, I don't know the angle, so I have to get rid of tangent, leave angle by itself, right? Leave theta by itself. So I, how do I get rid of it? I take the inverse of it. So it's the inverse of 20 over 100. I guess you could reduce that fraction. I don't really need to because guess what you're going to use? Calculator. Okay, so let's do that. On this calculator, we hit second function tangent, right? Second function tangent. We hit that first on this calculator. On those other calculators, you would do the fraction first, then you would hit second function tangent. It's just the opposite order, okay? This one, though, you go second function tangent, it's 20 <coughs> over 100, and then equals 11.3 degrees. So that angle is 11, we'll just say 11 degrees. And that's what that angle is on that line of sight, okay? So that's kind of the stuff that you're going to be doing. All right, I'm going to give you a worksheet. There's only four problems on this worksheet, and they actually give you like a little example problem, which is kind of nice. All right, um, when's the bell ring? Like right now? 11-11. Okay, let me uh, just show you something here. Let's stop this.